Hi, this is Elizabeth Huttinger from the 2020 Initiative. Our mission is to develop interdisciplinary projects that translate proven discoveries in health from the scientific community into practical applications for developing countries. As part of their research on predator-prey relationships in the food web, scientists Armin Kuris, Kevin Lafferty, and their team at UC Santa Barbara studied how disruptions in the food chain, such as invasive species like these plants choking the river, or barriers to migration, like dams, can change parasitic diseases. Schistosmiasis is the world's fourth largest disease. The parasite are carried and released by tiny water snails. In Senegal, West Africa, schisto was caused by a new dam that unintentionally disrupted the ecosystem. It changed the flora, eliminated the prawn, caused hikes in the number of snails, resulting in an epidemic in millions of people who depend on rivers and lakes for washing their clothes, bathing, collecting household water, washing their animals, watering their herds, and swimming. The result is incapacitating parasitic infection of the liver, intestines, kidneys, and bladder. Our objective is to return the snail's predator to the habitat and break the cycle of disease. Restoring the indigenous prawn could be the most significant contribution so far in fighting schistosomiasis. This is the native river prawn that vanished above the dam in the late 1980s, and here it is in its natural habitat. Without this predator, the snail population exploded and so did schistosomiasis. Our research design is simple. We treated 700 participants with the drug Praziquantel, both test groups and control groups, to create a zero base of infection to start with. Then we return four, eight, and 12 months later to test the population for schisto. People protected by the prawns will have a significantly lower rate of infection. It's the nature of freshwater prawns to eat snails. They can eat up to a third of their own body weight every day. They eat snails for the calcium in their shells, eating most aggressively during their growth period because they shed their own armature 12 times before reaching adult size. So there's a huge need for the calcium from snails every time the prawn grows a new shell of its own. The National Aquaculture Agency is providing us with a state-of-the-art fish hatchery located in the estuary of the Senegal River. It's entirely powered by solar energy, with 10 hatching tanks, 8 concrete grow-out tanks, and floating cages offshore. Together, this agency and Projet Crevette are launching the effort to produce millions of fingerlings every year to stock village watering points where they will consume infected snails and break the cycle of disease. Here's the hatchery, and here are our current demonstration sites, where we've built large, low-density farming cages at the village beaches that will be home to each crop of prawns, from fingerling to market size. Villagers have already adopted some behavior changes, like doing more of their laundry work on shore rather than in the water, and pouring their soapy water into a sand trap instead of polluting the river with it. In the next phase of the project, we'll begin to expand this program to several more sites where schistosomiasis today is higher than 50% of the population. We'll also expand the approach by stocking the irrigation canals of large plantations and rice paddies, where prawns can be grown in polyculture and protect the field workers from schisto at the same time. Coincidentally, Senegal just completed a major highway improvement between Saint Louis and Richard Toll, which will help get the prawns to market. They're also paving a direct road to the Lac de Guerre that will really improve access to our current test sites, an area where before the introduction of prawns, 80% of the population had chronic schistosomiasis. Here are the partners of Projet Crevette. Our lead partner is the University of California. We coordinate with the Ministry of Health and the Ethics Committee on Human Research. The National Aquaculture Agency is our lead technical partner, and we also have a number of international experts. The sustainability of schisto control is guaranteed by the fact that a sizable crop of freshwater prawns will be available to the villagers every six months to either eat or sell. Another benefit is prawns sell for about five times the price of fish. 38 team members work on this project on three continents. Projet Crevette will be scaled up to be a sustainable free-range fishery that can be applied wherever dams have changed ecosystems and caused schisto. As a final note, let me report that the Dean of the Bren School of Environment Policy and Management at UC Santa Barbara said Projet Crevette represents a new frontier in health 
where ecosystem management is used as a public health intervention. He said the project will break new ground in ecology, public health, food security, and economics. I hope you'll continue to follow our exciting progress. This is a unique convergence of villagers, doctors, and scientists coming together and solving one of the largest problems in global health. Africa, African Pololay.